it. Amen. Uh, I, I, I pointed to Renee, and uh, next thing I saw was a flying elbow <laughs> right into Hoyt's ribs. And evidently, Hoyt's gotten a few of those in his life. He just jumped straight up <laughs> and said, <laughs> Amen. You got, you got him trained right, don't you, Nay? Amen. <laughs> Amen, that's good. Enjoyed the services this morning. I hope uh, uh, God was uh, uh, blessing you as he was blessing me. And uh, I tell you, I was so uh, excited after the service this morning. Of course, we, uh, I had all the kids go outside with me, all the school-age kids, and, and those that are part of our uh, youth class and all that, and uh, wanted to talk with them. And we filled that whole porch up, didn't we, Eddie? That was good. Tickled me to death. And uh, to share with you what I shared with them, I told them that what I wanted to do was to give them an opportunity to start in uh, ministry, to start to do things together, and also use their brains and their minds and their influence and their friends collectively to find out what things outside the church that they can do together. And I hope that they're excited about it. We're going to let them get together next week after we get full of turkey. All us adults will be sitting around looking like a bunch of stuffed turkeys. And uh, they'll get together. And I'm excited to hear some things they come up with, some things they can do together, and some things we can do out there uh, that they can do. It'll give them some ownership of it. And I think that's good. Of course, we'll be there. And I told Eddie, I said, and of course, Brandy and Tanya, said, we're going to have to keep an eye on this, make sure we don't get too wild, because I've done heard trips to Disney World and, and all kind of stuff like that. But uh, you, we'll, we'll, we'll have those. And, and while I'm all for going to Disney, the world I don't know if uh, if that's in the budget as Tommy says but uh, uh, but uh, I'm excited about that and I hope you'll pray about it I told them to get excited I said if you want to call it something we'll do it and, and uh, so pray for uh, the young people I'm excited to hear what God's doing in their heart sometimes uh, we go one way or the other with our kids sometimes we give them too much I think and we just kind of let it run wild and there's no restraint no control and that's not good but then also it's not good to not uh, give them anything to not let them be a part of it you know some of them are not far from uh, getting out of high school and uh, so I think it's time for them to kind of start thinking about what it is to serve God and using their brains a little bit mine don't get to use theirs very often so uh, all, all the more they can use theirs and exercise it the better off they'll be amen but it's uh, pray about that I'm excited about it and if you got your Bibles tonight <coughs> go with me to Daniel we uh, touched on this this morning as I covered quite a few stories in the Bible but Daniel chapter 3 God's got us back here tonight uh, went back and forth on where God would have us to be but it seems as though God led me back here multiple times so we'll look at it Daniel chapter 3 tells us the story excuse me the story of the Hebrew boys and we know that story of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and what I want to look at we'll read in the way of context the probably towards the end of this story and then we'll go from there how many of you like sitting around a good campfire or a bonfire we're actually going to be doing that next week after our Thanksgiving meal and of course you know it gets dark about 2 30 now with the with the time change so after we eat and uh, some may want to go home and grab a chair or change of clothes we're going to build a fire out here and uh, just sit around and fellowship and and spend time together and and let uh, Jimmy sing for us and and uh, for that to be good won't be no bears come around will they Jimmy <laughs> no. But um, one thing about it, when you sit around a fire like that, uh, you all know what happens when you leave. You smell like smoke, don't you? And uh, that's something that's a thought that came to my mind as I thought about these three Hebrew boys. I want to preach tonight on the smell of smoke. The smell of smoke, or we maybe could call it how to come up smelling like roses, but that's too long a title. I don't want to write it down. So we'll just go with the smell of smoke. Daniel chapter 3, verses 26 and 27. If you got it, say amen. Daniel chapter 3, verse 26 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning, fiery furnace, and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth 
of the midst of the fire. And the princes, the governors, and the captains, and all the king's council, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair on their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Our Father, we stand humbly in your presence tonight. We are very thankful to get to do just that. We're thankful for the services this morning. We thank you for the Callahan family who decided to be uh, unite with us. We pray you'll bless them as they celebrate a birthday this evening. We pray for our sick, those that couldn't make it back. But Father, we're so thankful that we got to be here tonight. And as we stand before your word, we pray that you'll bless its reading. We pray you'll minister to our hearts as only that you can. We thank you for loving us. We pray you'll have your way now. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing with me. But no doubt, <clears throat> next week when we depart from the church, most of us uh, who have been anywhere near that fire that we're going to build, you're going to smell like fire. And it's one of the little talked about facts of this story, but as we look at it tonight, I think you might see it's one of the more amazing things outside the fact that they walked through the fire and, and God walked with them and he'll walk with us. But I want you to see what it says again there at the end of verse number 27. It talks about all the things that had not happened to them. And the last one there in the end of verse 27 says, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. And if you've been around fire, you know how easy that stuff is to, to get on you and, and how hard it is to sometimes get off. I've had clothes before that um, we used to build little fires out in the backyard and we'd sit around and roast uh, hot dogs or marshmallows and we'd get bored, we'd start burning sticks or something. And, and I had clothes that just seemed like I would wear out there and two or three times that smell just stopped washing out, you know, and you just had to, to keep it. Something about being around that fire, that smell just attracts to you. But not these boys. And I want you to see this tonight. I told you this morning when we were talking about it that they wouldn't bend, they wouldn't bow, and they wouldn't burn. Well, I want to show you tonight the smoke didn't stick, the smoke didn't stink, and the smoke didn't stop them. And now this is what I want us to be tonight. And if we're not careful, the smoke, I think, can be symbolic of something that can stop us. Because you see, the thing about a, the smell of a fire or the smell of smoke, it lingers. And it can be a reminder. It can be a reminder of where we've been, what we've been through, how hard it was, if you will, how much trouble we were in for a season, how much, you know, we were involved, how close we were to the fire, how much it was a part of us. And if we're not careful, it can start to deter us. If we're not careful, it can, it can make its way in, and then our lives as Christians will start smelling like smoke. And before we know it, instead of being able to press on for the Lord, we're too caught up on the smell of the smoke. But let's take a look at this tonight. <clears throat> I want to give you three thoughts. <clears throat> if I can uh, clear my throat all the way through this, that'd be enjoyable, won't it? I've never been a hacking preacher, but sometimes these sinus troubles make me want to be a hacking preacher <laughs> for all the wrong reasons. But um, take a look at this. Go to verse 28. I want you to see this. The smoke didn't stick. It would not define them. Look at verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's world and, and have uh, yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. You see, that could have defined them. It could have been, these are just the boys who walked through the fire. That's all they were. They got through this and this became who they were, what they were talked about. But the king didn't say anything about that. He said, this is the one who's got the amazing God. These are the boys who's got a powerful God. You see, that smoke smell wasn't stuck to them. So it let them forget what they had been through. It let them forget how all that stuff they had been through. And all of a sudden now it's not about the smoke stains. It's not about the smoke smell. It's about how good God is. It's about how much God has helped us. About how much he has led us and kept us through all kind of mess. The smoke didn't define them. Uh, the king said, hey, we ain't, I don't, we're not going to uh, talk about the boys in the fire. We're going to talk about the God that these boys serve. See, if we're not careful, the smoke will get the attention on us. When the smell of the smoke gets on us, it might bring us attention. You ever been around somebody who's been around a fire? We, got, we came up today before I went to uh, the funeral home. We got out of the car and somebody was burning something somewhere. And Chase got out and says, ah, what's that smell? And I said, well, it's somebody burning, you know, leaves or 
whatever they were burning. But that smell just kind of carries and, and it can linger. But these old boys, you see, it didn't stick to them. It didn't stay with them. It didn't become what they were. It didn't define them. And if we're not careful, the troubles that we go through in this life will begin to define us. All of a sudden, it's not about how great God is. It's about, oh, how much I've lived through. Now, stay with me. Now, I'm not, talking, I'm not talking bad about your testimony. We've all got testimony and you ought to give it. But let's make sure when we give our testimony that we're not trying to get, oh, woe is me. And let's talk about how great is God. Amen. A lot of that turns in. I'm not defined by all the problems I've been through. That's not who's made me, me. I don't want to be defined by all the, the fires I've been drugged through. I don't want to be defined by all the problems I've had in my life. I don't want that to be what people know about me. When people think of me, I want them to know that's the fella that loves God. That's the fella that has, has had God do amazing things in his life. I don't want them to know about me. I want them to know about God. I don't want the smoke to define me. I don't want it to stick to me. It didn't stick to these boys that said, nor, verse 27, the smell of fire, that's talking about smoke, had passed on them <laughs> it just moved right on not only did it not stick to them to define them it did not stink to defile them look at verse 29 excuse me therefore I make a decree that every people nation and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego shall be cut into pieces and their house shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. That smoke didn't defile them. Hey, the king didn't say, hey, you anybody bad mouth Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you'll answer to me. That's not what he said. He said anybody who bad mouths the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You see, it wasn't about them. It wasn't about the smoke. It wasn't about the fire. It wasn't about all they'd been through. It's about how great God was. And if we're not careful... Uh, that smoke will stick to us, and then we'll start to stink. Why? Because our righteousness is as filthy rags. And the Bible says pride stinketh in the nostrils of God. It's not, it's, sometimes I've met people who love the smell of smoke, don't you? They always want to tell you about how bad things are for them. They want to tell you about, oh, woe is me. Oh, listen, how's your day been? Oh, let me tell you. Oh, I woke up this morning, and I kicked the rail on my bed and got me in grown toenail and I guess I better I'll go to the doctor but my co-pay's too high my Medicare deductible's done been met or it ain't been met and uh, last time I went that old doctor he couldn't have speak English and I didn't know what he was saying I didn't know what he was saying I told him my toe was hurting he gave me a throat lozenge I just don't you know and about halfway through that you're like golly sorry I asked <laughs> you know love the smell of smoke I don't want attention on me. I want the attention on him. If God brings me through a fire, and has he not? Has he brought you through some fires, buddy? Oh, he's brought me through some. But it's not for me to go and just tell how strong I was. Let me tell you how strong I was the other day when I was faced with temptation. Let me tell you how good I beat the devil the other day. Let me tell you, if you listen to me, I'll tell you how to solve all your problems. All y'all's got debt problems, let me tell you how to fix it. Now listen, if you don't listen, I'll, you'll miss it. All y'all's got marriage trouble, listen to me, I'll tell you how to fix it all. You know what that does in God's nostrils? Who? What is that? It's defilement. It's stink. It's the smell of the fire. It didn't pass. It stuck and now that it's stuck, it's starting to stink. It's begun to define them. Now it's defiling them. And that's not what it's all about. I want it to pass on me. Not only that, but look on. It didn't stink to define them. Or it didn't stick to define them. It didn't stink to defile them. And it didn't stop them. It couldn't defeat them. Look at verse 30. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. You know what? Sometimes when we walk through the fire and the smell of the smoke gets a hold of us, that's as far as we can get because we're afraid of what's going to happen next. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have kept on and the next time something come around, they could have been like, fellas, I don't know. Last time we tried to take a stand, you remember what happened? <laughs> we ended up in that furnace. Yeah, God delivered us, but 
I don't know, why should we ought to test God? You think he'd be there again? I just don't know. You ever talk to anybody like that? God answered prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer for them. And now this thing's come up and they're like, oh, I just don't know if God will answer this one. <laughs> God ain't changed. The same God that answered your prayer the first time is the same God that's going to answer this one. Now, it's up to us to accept what he says, but I'll tell you he'll answer. He will. Now, what had happened, what could have been, is they could have carried around that smell of that smoke and said, well, kind of like a scar. And every time an opportunity come up for the Lord to do something, it'd be like, yeah, I remember how hard that was. I just don't think I'm strong enough to do that again. Well, here's an opportunity that I can serve the Lord, but, oh, boy, I just, I just, I just don't know if I can do it. My faith ain't like it was. You know, when I was young, I was on fire for the Lord. I, I, I would sing in the church. I'd come to Sunday school. I was reading my Bible. Years have gone on. I'm not doing that no more. And I just don't know if I get in the fire again, God might let me burn this time. You know, I just, I just don't know. You see what the smell of that smoke can do? It can stop it all. It can completely deter and stop everything out of fear. But the smell of the smoke, the smell of the fire passed on them boys. You know why? I bet they just, God's in a way was telling them, I think, keep on going, boys. You ain't done yet. That's just a little thing. Don't linger on it. Don't get hung up on it. Don't let that define you. Sure, don't let it defile you and be all you talk about. But don't let it stop you. Don't let it deter you keep on going what fires have you been through I could tell you what fires I've been through you could tell me what fires you've been through and uh, sometimes that smoke we let it stick to us don't we sometimes we let it stick we just can't uh, we can't deal with it we can't uh, let ourselves forgive ourselves we can't accept what God has done or something to that effect we let it stick to us and it begins to define us all of a sudden we're not servants of the living God we're somebody who's been through an awful life but we're still alive no friend it ain't about me it's about him some of the greatest saints you'll ever read about in history went through a lot but if you used to ask them in a lot of their biographies when you would talk to them it wasn't about all they had been through it was about how great God was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could have walked around their chest puffed out and says, yep, we're the ones who walked through the fire and lived. What have you done? What have you done for the Lord? <laughs> That's nice, but hey, guess what? Me and my boys, we walked through the fire. And the fire didn't get us. Somebody say, yeah, but you still smell like smoke. God help us not to smell like the smoke. God help us to let it pass. Don't let it stick. Don't let it stink. Don't let it stop you. You're going through a fire right now. The same God that walked you through the last one will walk you through this one. And I'll tell you, if you'll pray and if you'll seek God's face and if you'll walk with him, you'll come out of it and would be to God. The smell of the smoke won't stick. And we can come out, we can come through it, and we ain't got to tell about how strong we were. We tell about how good God is. We don't going to tell about how powerful of a faith we had. <laughs> We're going to talk about how weak we are and how strong he is. Don't let it do that. Don't let it stick to you. Don't let it defile you. Don't let it stop you. Has the smoke stopped you for doing something for the Lord? Is the smoke, the smell of it, does it come back into your nostrils every now and again? There are certain smells that trigger memories. You know that? Uh, at work there's a lady who does a she has a beauty shop there her name's Lily spelled a little different than my Lily but uh, sweet I mean she's a sweet girl super super sweet the church she goes to she she loves the Lord she's a good worker and them ladies love her to do their hair she's one person but her appointment book's full all the time and you know places like that sometimes they forget they just had their hair done so they got an appointment an appointment <laughs> and the family has to come in and say whoa <laughs> you know but uh, she'll uh, do permanents. And Granny had her beauty shop, and she'd get permanents, and I always remembered that smell. And uh, I'd walk by the other day, and I was headed to a room, and I got that smell. She was given a permanent, and it just got my nose, and it took me back to 
five, ten year old waiting on Granny to get done doing hair so we can go to Kmart, you know. <laughs> go to Kmart. Well, we'd go to Quick Burger to get us a, a burger and a milkshake on Spring Place Road. It's still there. It's called something else now. Go to Quick Burger and then we'd go to Kmart. I was walking down the hall and it just took me back. Smells will do that. Every night again, there'll be things I'll smell that'll bring back things from childhood. Those are good things. But sometimes when we're serving God, the smell of the smoke will come back. Boy, I'd really like to get up and sing for that bunch. But the last time I sung, somebody got up and walked out. What you don't know is they was probably sick, went out there to cough, went out there to blow the nose. But the smell of the smoke stuck. Well, you know, I'd like to give my testimony. But the last time I gave my testimony, I heard people, they was just a fidgeting and going on. I, I think it just took too long. I, I don't want to do that again. Smell of the smoke sticking to you. I'd like to tell somebody at work that I'd like to pray with them. But the last time I asked somebody if I could pray with them, they said, no, they didn't pray. The smell of the smoke is stopping you. Don't let the smell of the smoke stop you. It's my prayer tonight that we'll let God get rid of it. And by the way, all you ladies know this. How does one go about recovering a garment when it has been exposed to campfire smoke? Starts with wash. Wash them suckers. Put them in the shower. Hey, put a little shout on them and wash them, amen? That's good preaching. Put a little shout in it and wash it, baby. <laughs> but you wash it. You know what we need to do? Bathe it in prayer. Soak it in the prayers that you can offer. Bathe it, if you will, on the altar. Pray, soak it, bathe it in prayer. And watch God wash the smoke out of it. Watch God wash away the smell of the smoke. Maybe you ain't never been saved and that smell of smoke is sin stains in your life. Can I tell you, God will wash that too. Have you been to Jesus for that cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen? Are you washed? He can wash you. Don't let the smoke stop you. Let's be like the Hebrew boys. They came out. Yes, they came out, but there's more to the story. No hairs. That's another message. Their clothes were fine. That's another message. But the smell of the fire had passed. I mean, the smell of smoke was not there. And they kept on for the Lord. Don't let anything stop you from coming to Jesus. Don't let anything stop you from serving Jesus. Don't let anything stop you because the smell of the smoke is what you're smelling. But Jesus can wash it away. Let's stand together all around the church tonight.